Hi, Bill. Hi, Corey. Good uh, to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for coming uh, over to my office to talk about your new book, Expiration Day. So I, I read this book um, in a very early galley uh, tour. Our mutual publisher printed a copy and posted it to me for a quote and for review, and it was really impressive. Uh, and I was struck by how a lot of the themes that I often have visited in my work appear in your work and how differently they were handled. And I thought maybe we could talk about um, internet surveillance and uh, internet censorship, because you've handled that very differently than I have. Indeed. Um, I think in, the, um, in, in Tanya's world, the, uh, she has absolutely no perception of uh, what the outside uh, reality is. She's in a very cocooned environment, completely controlled. Whereas your books tend to look at um, finding holes through that uh, and uh, reasserting the freedoms. And I think you've uh, you compared it to the difference between 1984 and Brave New Worlds. So I, I, if I get what you're um, driving at, the Tanya society needs to be protected from the very unpleasant truths. Tell us about that truth. So what's, what's the setup for the book? Okay, well, um, I found that um, uh, out of nowhere I got the idea all of kids are robots, except for just a few. So what were the situations where that might have come across and move quite quickly into a kind of post-apocalypse um, in which the, uh, the thing which kills humanity is, is just completely um, uh, unexplained fall in the birth rate. And um, the other thing that I was struck by is a difference between the way you manage the books and I do, uh, uh, and these, these young adult narratives, is that I tend to get the parents out of the picture very quickly and keep them out of the, the picture. I'm a parent, and uh, it's something that I devote a lot of thought and time to, but um, I, I'm somewhat uncomfortable, I think, maybe with the idea of putting, uh, of having parents steer the kids through the disaster, having parents present in the disaster, whereas the parental the relationship of the parent and the child in your book is kind of the, the source of all the tension, right? In the end, yes, I agree, it does end up that way. Um, the parents are trying to do the best for their child and steer them down perhaps not the best path. I too am a parent and my children I think are slightly older than yours and so uh, I, perhaps I've seen that more in myself that the parents do make mistakes mm -hmm. um, but the, that doesn't break the, the love that exists between uh, the parent and the child. And it's clear that in, in the middle of the book, the relationship between Tanya and her father breaks down somewhat and is restored by the end of the book. There's a traditional arc in the young adult novel, uh, whether that's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, or um, uh, oh, Harry, Potter. Harry Potter, yeah, where, where kids mm -hmm. Uh, come of age by leaving their parents, right? They, 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 you know, being, being in their parents' bosom is antithetical to them defining themselves as, as fully-fledged human beings. Uh, and um, I think that that was definitely something that, that uh, resonated through my own imagining of how a young adult novel might work. And I was really interested by that move of yours. That and and in some ways, you know, your move because it's so claustrophobic, and because the end is somewhat foreordained in your book. There's, there's not really much hope, right? I mean, from pretty early on, we know that the human race is definitely in decline here. And doomed, yes. It's a lot more Anne Frank than than Little Brother, in as much as you kind of you have a sense of where this thing is going to go, and it's not going to go well. Yes, though I always felt the need to, to balance that up, um, and at the end we, we, do, see, um, we do see Tanya uh, fleeing the nest, fl uh, flying mm -hmm. uh, off on her own, uh, making her own decisions, and her father almost kicks her out. Mm. Um, he sends her away. Uh, so there is that uh, growing up. But you, you compared uh, Anne Frank. Um, I, is, is that because of the diary format? Or, um? Well, the diary format, young girl coming of age, young girl and father uh, confronting disaster together, the combination of, of um, sort of girlish confession and, and naivete with the uh, harsher realities of the exterior world. I mean, all of that stuff. 
Okay, yeah, it's. I think that might have been an unconscious in, uh, influence. I don't think I've consciously tried to emulate, but yes, I, I can certainly see the parallels there. I mean, writers never know what they're doing. Ray Bradbury thought Fahrenheit 451 was a book about television, not a book about censorship. What's a young adult novel in your view? Um, I didn't consciously write Expiration Day as a young adult novel, and uh, I'm gradually exploring the, the realm, having written it, to see where um, uh, what the differences are. Um, I very much wrote the novel uh, to be read by anyone from age, I don't know, 10 upwards. For me, I like the drama of writing about adolescence because, not because adolescents are inherently dramatic drama queens, but because doing something for the first time is dramatic in a way that doing it for the hundredth time is not. Um, especially when it's something consequential, you don't know what kind of person you're going to be afterwards. There are a series of one-way transformative gateways that you pass through on the way to becoming an adult, and they're, because the um, eventual consequences of them are not only unknown, but in some visceral way unknowable, they're brave to the, part of, to the point of foolhardiness, right? Like doing things for the first time is a bit of a leap off the cliff wearing wings made of wax and feathers that you have no idea how they're going to work. And, and so I love that kind of bravery and drama of kids. Yet at the same time, they don't actually realize that they're going to be changed by these experiences. Mm -hmm. um, if, they, if you walk into the back of the wardrobe, you just think you're going to find coats, not another kingdom which is going to uh, completely revolutionize your life. And uh, I don't suppose Marcus um, felt that uh, any particular step was the uh, irrevocable one which would change him. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's right. And I think that, you know, one of the nice, um, one of the nice moves you can do with a young adult novel is, is periodically bring the character up short and confront them with, with all the things they've done that they couldn't have done at the start of the book. You know, to, to the extent that a novel is a machine that transforms a character from one person into another, that it's nice to stop at some of those intermediate states and check the machining and see how the seams are coming along, whether the tolerances are fitting. Yeah. Well, it's a remarkable book. I certainly think that there's a, there's a, a, a large potential audience for it. I enjoyed it immensely. I, I found it very hard to put okay. down, and I was certainly in tears by the end of it, you bastard. That is, that's a result, yeah. Oh, very good. Well, so long as you can make the reader cry, you're doing something right. Yeah.